More than half of Israel is desert. That means the lack of clean water is a life or death issue. But Israel has done so well at cleansing water through methods like desalination and recycling that they're exporting their ideas to help other struggling countries. CBN's Gordon Robertson has the conclusion to this report. Israel may be short on fresh water, but the country's Negev desert is sitting on an underground ocean, too salty to drink or desalinate. So Israeli settlers found a new way to use it. You cannot really fight nature. Nature will fight you back. We found out after the years that it's better to cooperate and to coordinate with what you've got. Yoav Dagan is one of a growing number of Israelis who have left the ocean to go fishing in the desert. They build fish farms using the warm, salty water from underground. It's ideal for raising saltwater fish like tilapia, sea bass, and barramundi. The place here is working without chemicals, without anything. It's very healthy, it's friendly for the environment. And it's good for us in a matter of the pocket. We are making good money, and this is uh, by the bottom line. At this kibbutz in the Negev Desert, even the fish waste is put to use. Every week, the water in these tanks is replaced and pumped underground to irrigate the nearby olive grove. The fish waste in the water makes an ideal natural fertilizer. As you can see on the side, the olives are growing around the farm, around the fish and are doing very well without any other chemicals, only by the nutrients of the fish. Israel has taken this idea to other countries, struggling with water and food shortages. We're taking African villages, teaching them how to essentially build fish farms. If you look at around Lake Victoria, the Nile perch were dying. And Israelis are now going in to teach the farmers how to grow them in ponds so that you can actually continue to eat the Nile perch. Over the years, Israelis also found new ways to use less water. And as always, they started in the desert. Of the Arava, sometimes as 20 millimeters of rain annual fall, very harsh climate, and still, thanks to drip irrigation, this became the vegetable barn of Israel. 65% of vegetable export out of Israel, mainly to Europe, is coming from the Arava. Today, even the driest parts of the desert are blooming, with help from a process called drip irrigation. The idea is older than the state of Israel itself. When the first settlers came here, Young people came from the city and they wanted to be farmers. And they came to Kibbutz Chatzirim and they faced many challenges. Arid land, high salinity, not enough water. And there was even a time when they considered moving to another place. But then Ben Gurion came, who was a leader with a real vision, and he said, guys, if you want to move, it's okay, but further south, not back to the north. And we stayed here and we continued and we did some experiment, but still we were struggling. Then we met the guy who invented drip irrigation. That guy was an engineer named Simka Blas. He got the idea for drip irrigation after seeing a tree that was larger than the others around it. After digging around the roots, he found it was being watered by a leak in an underground pipe. So this gave him the idea, but it took him some years, actually, until a plastic was introduced to start and, and make experiments with drippers that will emit water in small drops. And this is basically drip irrigation. Blas met the farmers of Kibbutz Hatzarim, and together they started a company called Netafim, which means drops of water in Hebrew. Soon they boosted their crop yield by 50% and used 40% less water to do it. Drip irrigation saves a lot of water. Producing more, getting more, 
yet not harming the environment. For almost half a century, the company has lived up to its slogan, grow more with less, not just in Israel, but in 110 countries around the world, from sugarcane fields in the Philippines to tea plantations in Tanzania. You know, India is now our number one country. The results, looking at the yield increase, were amazing. 50 farmers got an increase in yield between 25 and 50 percent. Another 20 of the farmers got an increase in yield of up to 70 percent. Everyone is talking about water scarcity. 70 percent, the water that we have available in the world for agriculture. Now, if we save only 15 percent in agriculture, we can model available water for drinking and sleep. In Hebrew, we have a, a, a term which is called tikkun olam, which is fixing the world. And this is basically what drip irrigation does. This is my personal goal and challenge. <laughs>